Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange, Standards Developing Organizations. This is Lecture B. In this lecture, we will provide some detail about the organizations that develop standards for health information technology, HIT, for the global community. We will discuss specific organizations and the kind of standards each organization develops. The objectives for this lecture are to understand different kinds of standards being developed and for what purpose. Learn about standards developing organizations and the standards they create. Demonstrate how to find, obtain, and use standards that are needed to facilitate networking and health information exchange. The International Standards Organization's Technical Committee, ISO TC215, was established in 1998 under strong initiative and leadership from the U.S. and the United Kingdom. Most countries require the use of an ISO standard if one exists. Standards are available from ISO, but at a cost. Membership is by nations, represented by delegates representing the countries. Currently, TC215 has 32 participating countries and 21 observing countries. These numbers are in constant fluctuation and represents most regions of the world. ISO TC215 has published almost 100 standards under their direct responsibilities. Balloting is by country. Products are technical reports, which describe and discuss a topic. TRs are for information only. Technical specifications, similar to a standard but does not require compliance. A TS is a strong suggestion. International standards, known as a normative document, must be followed explicitly to be compliant. Any departure from the standard is non-compliant. ISO has many technical committees, and several are of interest to healthcare. Other TCs are represented in TC215 through liaison, 30 in number. Other organizations can also establish liaison relationships with ISO. 10. Liaison members of TC215 include CDISC, COCIR, DICOM, GS1, HON, ICN, IHE, IHT, SDO, EMEA, and WHO. TC215 has eight active work groups. One other group, WG5 on data cards, completed its work and was inactivated. WG1 deals with data structure and is the WG that defines standards for the EHR and related material. WG2 deals with data interchange and includes messaging standards, data types, data models, and such. WG3 deals with terminology. WG4 deals with security. WG6 deals with pharmacy, regulatory, and adverse event reporting standards. WG7 deals with connectivity to medical devices. This group works closely with IEEE and CEN on standards that connect medical devices to systems. WG8 is similar to WG1. Sometimes the distinction is difficult to define. This WG deals more with what an EHR is rather than its structure and architecture. WG9 is a different type of WG in that its purpose is harmonization of standards activities among multiple SDOs. It is closely affiliated with the Joint Initiative Council, a collaborative organization of many international SDOs. The European Committee on Standardization, CEN, has a bilateral agreement with ISO called the Vienna Agreement, whereby CEN standards can become ISO standards and ISO standards can become CEN standards. HL7 International has a pilot agreement through which HL7 standards can be submitted to TC215 to become ISO standards. IEEE has a partnership agreement through which IEEE standards can become ISO standards. The Joint Initiative Council was formed in 2007 by ISO, CEN, and HL7 International. SDOs subsequently joining JIC include CDISC, IHT SDO, and GS1. The purpose of the JIC is to create one standard for one purpose. One of the first successes of the JIC was the creation of a single standard for data types. 
Other activities include a standard for reporting adverse events, individual case safety report, a glossary, the Biomedical Research Integrated Domain Group, Bridge, EHR Functional Model, and others. A standard moves to JIC when multiple SDOs have an interest in creating the same standard and the SDOs agree to work together. Although CEN has been in existence for a long time, the health focus was created in the early 1990s. The acronym CEN comes from the French name of the organization, Committee of European Normalization. The 27 member countries of the European Union are members of CEN. CEN has published over 160 technical reports, technical specifications, pre-standards and European standards since the early 1990s. 18 of these standards are jointly published as ISO standards. Much of the standards work in CEN is done by paid consultants. Balloting is by country. CEN functions with four work groups. WG1 is similar to ISO, WG1, WG6, and WG8. WG2 is similar to ISO, WG3. WG3 is similar to ISO, WG4. WG4 is similar to ISO, WG2, and ISO, WG8. EN means European National Standard. The reference model defined in Part 1 is different than the HL7 reference information model and has created some harmonization problems. Reference information models are important because they are the basis from which the data parts of standards are created and are key to interoperability. Part 1 also defines the architecture for the EHR. The EHR is defined as a hierarchical structure of components or folders, similar to a paper chart in which a single encounter would be a folder. The collection of folders would create the EHR. Archetypes are data structures such as the components that are part of a blood pressure measurement. The UK uses these archetypes as a key part of data definition and data interchange. Europe is now moving toward the use of archetypes. Again, there is competition between HL7's detailed clinical models and templates. However, efforts are being made to harmonize these activities. Part 5 competes with HL7 messaging standards and is in little use at this time. The other parts of 13606 are not in significant use at this time. The name Health Level 7 comes from two terms, health which represents the domain of focus and includes clinical and administrative data. Level 7 refers to the highest level of the ISO communications model for Open Systems Interconnection, OSI, the application level. HL7 is in use in most hospitals in the U.S. and an increasing number of clinics and doctor's offices. HL7 is governed by a board of 15 members, including four officers, chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. The organization is led also by a chief executive officer, Dr. Charles Jaffe, and an executive director, Mark McDougall. An external advisory council provides advice to the organization. HL7 International is ANSI accredited and is an ISO partner. Many HL7 standards are required for use by ONC as part of the meaningful use requirement. In the technical organizational structure of HL7, there are four steering divisions. These divisions are domain experts, foundation and technology, structure and semantic design, technical and support services. Each has a number of work groups that make up the division. The next four slides will detail the content of these steering divisions. They are grouped by similarity in the kind of work done by the group. The steering divisions provide the composition and leadership in the Technical Steering Committee, TSC, which provides the technical leadership of HL7. The TSC is led by the TSC Chair, Member Volunteer, and the HL7 Chief Technical Officer, who is a member of the HL7 staff, John Quinn. The Domain Expert Steering Group includes all of the domain-specific activities. The members of this group, shown on the screen, is the most clinical group in HL7 
and brings the clinical community into the standards-making process. Shown here is the Foundation and Technology Division. These members build the basic pieces that others, like domain experts and structure and semantic design work groups, use to actually construct the messages. The Structure and Semantic Design Group addresses structural standards. They include administrative and service-related standards. Orders and observation deals with laboratory ordering and results reporting, for example. Clinical decision support standards are required for meaningful use. Details of the products from these work groups will be discussed in the following slides. Technical and Support Services Division has work groups who focus on tools and products that make HL7 successful at doing its work. For instance, publishing makes sure there are tools and processes for publishing the work. The work groups in this division do not develop HL7 products, they provide the tools so that others can do so. Version 2.x messaging standards are the first standards HL7 produced. It is, in fact, its purpose for coming into existence. Over 90% of the hospitals in the U.S. use version 2.x standards. Version 2.7 is the latest current published version, and version 2.8 is in ballot. These messaging standards will be discussed in detail in another unit. Connectivity and sharing data use messaging standards. The Master File Structure Infrastructure Standards permit the exchange of files, such as data dictionaries, vocabularies, and other resources among participants. Role-based access control is very important for privacy and security. These standards define who can have access to data based on what role they play in that patient's care. As noted, the Reference Information Model, RIM, is the base for HL7 model-based standards, including HL7 version 3 messaging and the Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, standard. The RIM is the model to which components of all HL7 data-related standards are linked. The prime components are entity, role of the entity, act, and participation of the entity with the act. Data types are essential to interoperability. They can be as simple as a date. Is it DDMMYY or MMDDYY? Is it a 12-hour clock with AM or PM, or is it a 24-hour clock? What is the time zone, and how is it expressed? The basic data types are the ones that you might use in a computer program. Binary, numeric, integer, floating point, character, text, string, date, time, etc. The common message element type, or CMET, defines commonly used constructs such as a telephone number, a person, name, or an address. CMETs are reusable data structures and have great value in the international setting. The XML Implementation Technology Specification, ITS, for structures defines the constructs for XML syntax in HL7 messages. These standards move into the application area. The EHR functional model defines the functionality required for an EHR system. Different applications are addressed by creating profiles or implementation guides for various domains and care settings. This standard is the basis for certification of EHRs in the U.S. and is now being used in other countries as well. This topic will be discussed in detail in later units. The behavioral health functional model and the child health functional model are examples of profiling the basic standard for a specific domain. Profiling is expanding into a number of sites, settings, and uses. Scheduling permits the exchange of appointment and diagnostic test scheduling among units. Notifiable conditions reporting defines required reporting, for example, for communicable diseases, infectious diseases, sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, and such. Personnel management includes standards that support reporting and the exchange of data relating to personnel management. The genomic standard is rapidly being used for sharing family histories, constructing family trees. The Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, is a standard for creating documents. Its use is becoming worldwide 
and permits a measure of conformance and integrity in the exchange of data. The CDA will be discussed in detail in a later unit. The Continuity of Care document, CCD, is a specialization of the CDA, in a sense an implementation guide for the exchange of summary patient data. HL7 has now produced a number of purpose-specific implementation guides. The decision support products will also be addressed in detail in later units. Clinical decision support systems, CDSS, are important, not only for meaningful use, but for applying knowledge to data to provide information. The Arden syntax and the virtual medical record permit an SOA-based approach to decision support through a map able to interface to any EHR. GELLO is the language for creating clinical guidelines. Info button is a standard for attaching knowledge and the presentation of knowledge for any data element. The standard has been quickly used by vendors to add value to their product. These regulated product standards have been influenced by regulatory bodies such as the FDA and European Medicines Agency, EMEA. Structured product labeling, SPL, is a standard for defining what you get on the small print piece of paper that is included with your drug package. It addresses such things as potential side effects, ingredients, dosing instructions, precautions, etc. SPL provides this data in a structured way to be used in a computable manner. The annotated ECG includes the tracing, measurements, and comments in a structured way. The Individual Case Safety Report, ICSR, serves to report drug-caused adverse events. This standard is being used internationally by both FDA and ICH-EMEA. The other standards relate to drug trials and for the submission of regulated products detail to the FDA. The Common Product Model, CPM, addresses expanding types of products, including devices and substances. The Clinical Context Object Workgroup, CCOW, has created a set of standards that takes a patient ID and passes it to related systems, retrieves that patient record, and links it to the current system. In essence, this standard permits single sign-on. The user is authenticated across the different systems. If a site is supported by multiple different systems, CCOW will provide access to the same patient's data across the different applications without logging on to that system and independently bringing up that patient's record. CCOW will provide access to the same patient's data across the different applications without logging on to that system and independently bringing up that patient's record. CCOW is a tremendous time saver. The other parts of CCOW provide additional functionality across multiple systems or applications. An implementation guide, IG, defines specifically what is required in the use of a standard for a specific purpose. The IG removes optionality. For example, it states what data elements are required and when. It defines specifically what vocabularies are to be used. It defines when data is exchanged. With a well-written IG, interoperability can be achieved across the group using the IG. Some IGs define the rules for providing security using the Internet. Other IGs define security requirements for a variety of settings. For example, CCD is an implementation guide for exchanging patient summary data. Another example is the rules for claims attachments are defined by CMS. It specifies what clinical or administrative data are to be sent supporting the claim. Displayed here is a list of implementation guides being developed by HL7, and this list continues to grow. Several HL7 standards will be required by HHS as a part of the meaningful use. Named standards include HL7 version 2.5.1 Implementation Guide, Electronic Laboratory Results Reporting to Public Health, Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, Continuity of Care Document, CCD, Messaging Standard version 2.5.1, and Messaging Standard version 2.3.1. You are likely to encounter these standards in your job as an IT person.
We will discuss all of these standards in detail in other parts of this component. The Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium, CDISC, is an organization started mainly by pharmaceutical companies. It is a research-based organization created to support clinical trials. It is now international and holds meetings around the world. Most of the standards define data elements used in research and clinical trials. Study Data Tabulation Model, SDTM, defines data elements used in clinical trials. The CDISC Analysis Data Model, ADAM, defines statistical analyses performed on clinical trials data. Other standards include an Operational Data Model, ODM, Clinical Data Acquisition Standards Harmonization, C a Lab Data Model, and Terminology for Clinical Trials. Key GS1 standards include barcodes, ECOM, Electronic Business Messaging Standards for Automatic Transmission of Data, GDSN, Global Data Synchronization, Allow business partners to have consistent item data in their system at the same time. EPC Global, use RFID technology to track items in real time. If you work in a setting that uses barcodes, you are likely to use a GS1 standard. GS1 creates a unit identifier that can exist throughout the supply chain. Ideally, the standard will be used from product creation to product use. The GS1 ID system enhances traceability, the ability to trace a product throughout its life cycle. RFID is for radio frequency identifiers. It is a badge that contains an RF transmitter that transmits the identity indicated on the card. It is used to track people, including physicians and patients, equipment, and supplies. This concludes Lecture B of Standards Developing Organizations. In this lecture, you learn that there are many SDOs, both national and international, that create standards necessary for interoperability. The challenge exists that there are both overlapping and competing standards, and there are gaps in the required standards. Each SDO has its own focus, but in time, most SDOs have creeping scope. It's interesting that we have so many SDOs, because producing standards is an expensive task. Most SDOs have budgets in the million-dollar range, and many companies spend hundreds of thousands of dollars annually to participate in making standards. Consequently, there are limited resources for creating standards. So why not work together? The making of standards has created other businesses, including consultants who teach you how to use standards and educators who teach you about standards. You won't remember the details of every one of the SDOs we discussed in this unit, but you will have some familiarity with the names and some idea of what kinds of standards are produced.